Imagine living in a world where it's just a constant open mic. Constipation would be on the rise. You'd have to buy stock in KO Pectate. <laughs> well, get your x lax and your kombucha ready, because here we, we go! This episode is brought to you by Agula's Hitaway. All of them! Get ready! <laughs> What up, y'all? Welcome back to the Dumb Podcast. What's up? I am Don Dario. My name is Kabari Edie. Yeah, we've got a special co-host today, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, we've got a kind of a freestyle episode with a new comic. So we're going to get this started. So kick back, chillax, and enjoy. What up, y'all? We've got a good one for you today, man. Uh, Kubari Edi is our guest co-host. How are you, sir? I'm good, and it's so glad to be here. Yo, I'm so dude, glad. Thank you for being here, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I've missed you, brother. Yeah, it's I've been a while you. since I've been on the dumb podcast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's good to be back with you. Peace to my man, Kev. What up, Kev? What up, Kev? Kev? Uh, Kevyallstar.com. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to keep your seat hot. Actually, it was already hot when I got in. I don't know. <laughs> I was farting in it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do before you get here, Kev. So get here on time. I got to no. change these pants. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we've got a great one for you today. We've got our buddy and a fellow co-host of I thought you were gonna say win. I thought you were going to say felon. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Probably oh. is a felon, too, but... <laughs> He also helps with the Say When Open Mic as a host as well, and he's hosting all over the place. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Justin Kirshner. Thank you. Thank you so much for the one round of applause that you had out here for me. You really know how to make a white person feel welcome here. That's Thank right, you. dude. How Beautiful. are you, Justin? Thank you for I'm being here. I'm doing fantastic. I'm so excited to be here. Finally get to hang out with you guys. I'll never forgive Kevin for missing this. Nah. So I'm going to bring this up every chance. I'm nice. kidding, buddy. Yeah. I love you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much. No, he was not missing it on I purpose. Know. He's going to be know. like, that motherfucker. No, no, no. I... He's allowing us to kind of mix things around. Kev, the all sorry we miss you, brother. Uh-huh. Can't wait to Love have you back buddy. on the next episode. Dude, Justin, man, it's going to be awesome, dude. Justin helps me with the, the Say When open mic or, uh, with me and Cole. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to get into today, man. Yeah. First of all, though, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, coming up just about two years now. That's it? Getting into Yeah. So, unfortunately, when I started was... Uh, the beautiful end of 2019 and the mm -hmm. beginning of 2020. Oh, oh dang! Did, yeah. Got got a whopping two open mics in before the whole shut down. Goddamn planet shut down. So yeah. and you didn't quit. No, nah, mo but you know there were some moments there. You know, <laughs> my fourth bag of hot Cheetos and eighth beer of the day <laughs> uh -huh. that I'm just like, you know what, this probably's not worth it. But yeah. <laughs> everything started opening back up, and you know things were you know starting to happen again. The mics came up, so I decided you know start getting out there again. So. Got excited to get right back into it, and then everything just kind of blew up as far as the scene. Yeah, as for you I mean, there's so many more comics now. I feel like yeah, post, a lot. post COVID yeah. than there were prior. You know, I talked I talked to a lot of comics that were around before it, and they were like, you know, the scene was there was just a lot of good comics, but it was a lot yeah. smaller. You know, fifty. Yeah to maybe 70 you know sometimes you know the, the the mic lists weren't as long but now you go to some of these mics now and i'm seeing some people posting you know 30 40 deep you yeah, know dude. on a tuesday wednesday mm -hmm. night el charo and, yeah used el charo like used to be like that there's a couple other ones that i'm seeing that you know these lists are going deep and we've been lucky a few times to have some fun yeah but yeah it's been crazy over the past few years how many more comics been popping out of the woodwork oh uh, yeah, yeah dude so what, what you're originally from phoenix right no actually no? i was born in atlanta Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was born in Atlanta. I lived out in New Orleans and in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, for a little bit before I got shipped out here because that's where my mom's side of the family is at. Yeah. Well, we moved. It wasn't like I got kidnapped and moved <laughs> so out here. I was Immigration say. didn't get me and move me back out there. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> how'd they get you into a UPS bag? <laughs> <laughs> they just threw you on the train somewhere. Uh, it cost a lot of fucking money, but you know. <laughs> 
But yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I grew up. I grew up out here. I've been so here since like I was high in, school was here. Oh yeah, high school. I've been here since kindergarten, basically. Oh, okay. So I was very young when I lived out there. But yeah, oh, not okay. originally from here. But I say you, you know, pretty much grew up. Pretty here. much one of the few. Everybody else, have, I guess, transplants too. So yeah, yeah. So then, what was your first open? Was it an open mic where you first mm-hmm. did comedy? What What was it? Or was it Which the Apollo was Theater? Or? <laughs> yes, it was in, in Fort of Staples uh, Center. No, no, Apollo Theater, two thousand, all black crowd. <laughs> it was nerve wracking. Okay. <laughs> And my lily white ass got on stage and be like, you know, you know, airplanes are fun, right, guys? <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, what's the deal with uh, homework? I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, needless to say, they loved me. Okay, yeah. they go. But no, the first one I did was Padre Murphy's. Um, oh, oh my, okay. you remember they had that yeah, back yeah. in the day? They they stopped that. Uh, Joshua Harrison was one hosting yep. that back then. Yeah, we were just while talking ago. about that. Mm-hmm. And um, then I did another one over uh, at. Uh, JP's back in the day. Okay. Uh, and then that then it was before you know things started shutting down. And then you know the new mics started popping up, and uh, you know I've been doing it you know fairly consistent ever since. It's weird though lately. I don't know if, if anybody else noticed like the mics kind of. I haven't seen a, like a strong consistent one stay for a while lately. It's just it yeah. seems like you know when I first started there was some you know that are just like you know th- these have been around for a long time. Devils We're, has. De- Devils has too. You know that's but you know a lot of them just kind of come up and um, they come and go a lot. You know th- there's always consistently yeah. ones around town. Kind of yeah. like the nature of the beast though. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. You know whether it be uh, mics, clubs, restaurants in and of themselves. You know they come out, come and go. You know it's a weird thing, and I gotta imagine it's a it's a it's a kind of a double edged sort of a sell to a bar and a restaurant because you know you go in, you're like, hey, usually it's your slower nights, Tuesday, Wednesdays. Hey, let us do this, and you do that, and they're and they're you know end of it, they're hoping, okay, this will drive in more drink sales, people right. will come in and see it. But we all know necessarily too, comics don't always drink a lot. Right? <laughs> and, yeah, and you do go stuff, out so and you get water. You do and out do in waters and stuff. So a lot of the times it doesn't always pan out what they think right. it is. And, you know, it's not, you know, unless you get a good one, you start rolling, getting a lot of momentum. Yeah. It, it could be difficult to keep something that maintains at a bar or, you know, or a restaurant or something wants to continually have there, yeah. you know, on a, on a weekly basis. Yeah. So. Well, like ours, Say When. And, and the feedback I've been getting from people for the Say When open mic is that, it's about energy, you know what I mean? Like if there's a good energy and people like coming down there, they're just gonna keep coming back. It's gonna get better and better. Like uh, an example, when you have an open mic that's just at a bar where people aren't expecting comedy, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You're kind of intruding on them. And that You get that energy, you get that negative energy where they, they'll start heckling and you know not paying attention and talking compared to say when which is like everybody that goes downstairs is there for the show like well except for the other week where i had to throw out that little that little man <laughs> oh, you, which one remember, oh, oh yeah yeah, yeah you remember yeah. him that's the only Homie. time i've ever had to do that he's gonna come back though he's, he's gonna he's come a, back. yeah he's gonna come I, back i, I talked to him okay, afterwards because i was like i felt bad that was like look i told him i was like dude i don't want you to feel like an outsider here uh-huh. i told him, i was like I tried to explain the whole thing to him, I was, and I told him, I was like, I was like, I, was, I told him this. I was like, did you see us swarm? <laughs> did you see us swarm on you? I was like, yeah. that means that everybody let it go to the edge, but then everybody knew when you stepped over that line, and everybody was on you. You mm-hmm. saw that, right? Nobody, we don't have, we're not timed, we're not on the same, you know, watch. We we didn't calculate that. <laughs> we just all knew. I was like, that's because you just crossed that line. I was like. And here's what I, I was like, this is how I want to flip it. I was like, yeah. the same way that we swarmed on you, come back, dude. Come on stage. If somebody does that to you, we're going to do the same for you. Mm-hmm. So you know what I mean? So it's just to give you a, a, a safe place to work on the craft. And, you know, and, and I'm learning this, too, after being hosting these mics and stuff like that. And I give comics the benefit of the down the room because they nine times out of ten, they know how to deal with hecklers. It's part, you know, it's part of what yeah. you do, unfortunately. You're going to yeah. get a drunk guy coming in. And, or you know, girl. Or girl, you know, which happens, too. Lady, um, sorry. La- <laughs> drunk woman. Woman. And <laughs> w- women's. <laughs> women's. Uh, you know, it, it's going to come in. And especially in that situation, I had never done that before. And that's, I'm generally not like that. And like I said, I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I let the comic, and he was doing a good job job on stage do it handling it but it, it came to the point where he thought he was part of the the set and he just kept yelling out in front of the middle of the bits ruining the guy's bits and stuff yeah. and i'm like okay you, you can't do I, that and then getting on stage taking off his shoes 
is where it kind of pushed me over the the line, and I'm like, nah, you, you got you can't do this, man. You got to go. And I and I and this is and looking back on it, I probably shouldn't. I just threw his fucking shoe at the staircase. <laughs> I was like, get the fuck out of here, man. That's just what no, it's dude. Like. I'll tell you something right now, man. <laughs> I loved you for that <laughs> shit. All right. I think everybody loved you for that yeah. shit. And it's just like, I think you've done it twice now. I think there was like some Mexican guy the last time he was. He like, was just a heckler. Like, I didn't have to I kick know. him. We were just going back and forth. And it was fun. And it was fun. And I talked to him after and he was right. really cool about and it. I, but I like how, like, you keep it, you keep it level, level, mm -hmm. level. And then it just gets to a point you're like, all right, asshole. <laughs> yeah. and, oh, it's the best, dude. <laughs> like, I, I've been there and I've been drunk and stuff. And, you know, people act a fool. And sometimes it's fun and it could work to a comic's advantage, too, if they know how to, if they know what they're doing. But it's just like, man, they always think that sometimes you can get Will Smith. You know, I know. <laughs> you know, he's getting close, and I think that's why. That's that's what at, to the point where it's like this is going to be a problem. It was creeping. And it was yeah. creeping. And, um, you know, I, I just don't like, and I want to make it a place where comics feel comfortable to do right. stuff. And I feel like the hideaway, especially, we're very lucky in the sense not only hit the away. owners, hit away, sorry, it's, um, hit away, hit away, uh, yeah, we'll edit that. <laughs> but we're very lucky in the sense not only that the owners gave us basically free reign of that that Fuck basement. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Danny, the bartender uh, yeah. down there, he's Daniel. awesome. Daniel, I guess, yeah, he doesn't Love like the Daniel. Daniel. Um, he's great, uh, and it's and it's also downstairs, kind of away. It's not just in right. a corner of a bar yeah. or something, a little separate, kind of like you know Tosos, where they have this separate area yeah, yeah, yeah. where they could do it. Where it's downstairs, so where it's like you said, like we said, at other open mics, you don't get that just random. Right. people element right. we have a little sign that says you know open mic open come down mic. Yeah. and then we do we also we, we try and encourage people to come down yeah. with with the riff session we do after the mic which yep. you know we'll just have people write ideas in a bucket we have we try and get people we go you know to go up and kind of talk to the people upstairs and be like hey we do this riff session after the mic mm -hmm. write your ideas on a bucket we go and we try and do a topic on yeah. whatever idea it is come downstairs and see if we get your you know, stupid idea and it's trust me yeah. it's a range from anything you know those jokes we prepared <laughs> we're gonna do something that we haven't prepared yeah <laughs> Good luck, you know, and it, yeah. it, you know, sometimes, it, you know, you get nothing and sometimes it's fun. You get on a good rant. You just start going. Uh -huh. But, it, you know, it ranges anywhere from, you know, uh, you know, you know, airplanes to like, sure. what is it? Uh, what was the one I, I got the other way? Uh, uh, like, e eating, eating, um, eating, uh, what is it? Eating, eating Reese's eating pieces out, out of Liz uh, Lizzo's asshole or something like go. that. Mm -hmm. I don't know who it was. I'm liking those phrases more now instead yeah. of just like single words. Geometry. Rats. Come on. You know what I'm I, got, I got rats one time and it was, I didn't know what to do with it. I figured out what to do with it. After, Afterward, of know, course. I'm at home just killing it. Dog. Yeah, killing, yeah, I'm killing rats, bro. I'm in bed just murdering <laughs> them. Man. I got a solid five on rats right now. I gotta just fuck it. Yeah, I know, but it's I just it's just a fun kind of exercise sure. to you know yeah. get your juices flowing. Sometimes fuck, it works, yeah. sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, it's cool, um, man. like I said, I, I feel we're very lucky in that aspect to yeah be able to have that place. Question: yeah. um, We know how long you've been doing comedy, but what? Like, if there's something that happened in your life, if you saw a show, if you saw another comedian, what made you want to start comedy? Like, go to an actual open mic and do it. Besides childhood trauma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, after the abuse, uh, it was, <laughs> uh, I was beaten really hard with a Robin Williams album when I was a child. And I'm like, you know what? This may be it. No, no, no. <laughs> They choke you with it. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Those are sharp edges. I got a few cuts and stuff, and then you know, you realize later on in life after you get over that, it's not so bad. It's no, not Robin's it's not fault. Bad. Okay, it's not, <laughs> a <cigarette. laughs> not a cigarette. No, <laughs> but um, I can't really pinpoint the exact like moment. But I just uh, growing up, I I loved watching stand up comedy. Um, I would do imitations. We had like karaoke machine when my friends would come over. I'd be doing nice. other. Who'd you watch? So, uh, big things. I was huge into the deaf comedy jam scene in the 90s, especially when they started doing comic twists and comic uh, review and stuff. Uh, the Apollo stuff, Martin Lawrence, mm. okay. um, Chris Tucker back in the mm. day oh, was yeah. an absolute yeah. killer. Yeah. Uh, there was some, uh, Patrice O'Neill was one of my huge oh, ones. But he's he's yes. personally my favorite comic. Yes. And stuff like that. And then I started getting in, and I started going into the legends, you know, the Robin Williams, Richard Pryor's, yep. you know, Eddie Murphy's, and stuff like that. Even managed, luckily, my mom was also a fan of them back in the day. She had old albums from yeah. him and yeah. stuff that are not exactly PC today. Uh -huh. <laughs> you listen yeah. to that even like just right on them, but it, they're great and they were hilarious. I remember watching HBO comedy specials all the time growing mm -hmm. up. Uh, you know, the Robin Williams one was another Hell big yeah. one for yep. a big one for me. Uh, the Kings of Comedy was a huge oh, thing. Yeah. I listened to that. Same thing with um, 
uh, what was it was the same thing but with the rednecks. Uh, I can't remember the, the uh, white collar, blue collar. Oh, yeah, blue collar comedy tour was blue another collar. huge yeah. one. You yeah. know, especially with my family and all of them being from the south too. That was just all you yeah. know, all that kind of shit. So I got really like a wide range of of things. I you know, luckily I like to listen to. Who would just, you say if you could? I mean, you can think about it too. You can think about it too. But if you could say there's one comic that you idolize or not not copy but if you could be like who would it be oh it'd be patrice o'neill oh yeah he's he's my Fuck my yeah. top and don't get me wrong i have you know you know obviously the bill burrs dave chappelle those yeah. guys are absolute yeah. legends in, yeah. in the, the modern you know yeah. i was gonna say gallagher but you yeah know. No, 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 crushing <laughs> patrice fucking, is cool you goddamn hack died. yeah <laughs> huh he, he just, just died, died. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's been a while yeah he passed away he had diabetes last year and stuff. No, no, it was, it was a few years ago. Okay, yeah, he's, he's passed away a little while ago. But I was, I always admired. Rest how, in peace, Gallagher. I, was, I thought that Gallagher. was this year. <laughs> no, Gallagher, Patrice O'Neill. Gallagher. Yeah. Oh, Gallagher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Gallagher just. I think, but I think Patrice O'Neill has been. Uh, no, yeah. Patrice O'Neill has been. Yeah, I think his brother took over, his like act. doing that. His act, mm-hmm. doing stuff like that. Last I heard. Probably ate too much watermelon. Probably, yeah. You know, too if much. If it works, shit. Overhydrated <laughs> on watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> if shit works, I'll do it, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what I loved about him was he never sounded like a stand-up comic in the sense where yep. it was just like set up punch like, you know bit like you know i went it was always when you listen to his stuff you could listen to it on spotify too and and all these places it was such a, it was like a full-blown conversation that he put his bits into and he yep. managed he's like he's just you and him are talking mm-hmm. and he's explaining and, and he does a brilliant thing and bill bird did this too and i think it's a lot of the new york comics he has a, he has an opinion that he knows that people are not going to like uh-huh. but he is so good at convincing you to be that he's right at the end of it and that yeah. it, and it turns uh around boston is where they're from oh uh, yeah he's boston but yeah. Yeah, yeah he started out in boston but him and burr yeah him boston. burr but you know uh a lot of those east coast guys they went um, to new york yeah mm-hmm. are you correcting me in the middle of my story sorry man you son sorry. of a bitch no, i'm kidding like... no you're right he, they, they did start out in boston but it was so and i want that's the kind of like style i try and emulate not trying to be like him but just right. more of it's like I don't want to try and be like a setup punchline mm. in a sense. As much mm-hmm. as I love, I love that, and I, I see a lot of great comics doing. I like to see it, it's almost like you have no idea you're, you're at a show. You're just more having like you're just talking to a guy, or he's telling you a story about mm-hmm. something. Yeah, and you you know it just it just seems like, like a natural flow. Yeah. He did that so well, and he did it to the point where he would upset people. Like literally, he would spend the first thirty minutes pissing people off with his uh, views and opinions on things, and then the, the second half is basically reeling him back in, basically explaining why he feels this way. Right. And even me, in some bits, I was like, oh, and I was like, and then he explains it, and he's like, oh shit, he's absolutely right. Yeah. Oh my god, I appreciate dude, the artistry. Yeah. No, dude, I gotta say, like, if that's what you're trying to do, you're doing it, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I see you all the time at the mics. You might come with a new joke. But you don't just uh, mm-hmm. you work it into into what I, you've already been talking about. Somehow. I appreciate that. I don't know how you do it. It's fucking amazing. But I dude, think it's more job. of a fake it till you make it kind of situation. <laughs> yeah. where it's like you know the first. It's just like I'm still trying to figure out who like my voice and how am I gonna do it. Right. I even catch myself pretending to be like like doing kind of like that mannerisms of other comics that mm-hmm. I just because it's what I think how it is and I'll catch like oh that sounds kind of like Bill Burr's or like uh, I'm like oh I was like why did I do that because uh, like let me put I, this mallet away yeah 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 I was like shit <laughs> why did I crush that watermelon in front of those six people at the open mic they're so goddamn pissed uh, <laughs> you know? that's funny so now man. I have to get rid of like 16 mallets that I bought this is bullshit <laughs> and uh, Ace Hardware is gonna be pissed I know goddamn <laughs> goddamn watermelon juice all over them they're not gonna take uh, this back uh, now I'm on the hook back. so look on Facebook Marketplace for those mallets if you there want to go but uh dude uh congratulations on winning the competition at toso oh bro. thank you yeah, i appreciate oh, it yeah. yeah big up so he won number one i was number two first runner <laughs> up Dope. but man killed it dude uh, thank killed you man it. everywhere I appreciate you that. do it you're killing it man it's awesome to be working with you mm-hmm. uh Likewise, man. every weekend at the open mic just controlling it mm-hmm. I love it, man. I have fun down there. Like, it's it's such a fun and, and and what really makes me feel good is I've had we've had such good feedback from comics, yeah, saying how much they just enjoy it and they're, they're enjoying the riff sessions and stuff and they love just it's just a fun room. It's a low. It's a very perfect comedy room. Fuck yeah. Low ceilings. It's dark. I mean, when you get a lot of people in there, it's so much fun to oh, you know yeah. really. It's such a fun place. And like I said, it's it's kind of you know separate from the actual bar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it really just feels like a comedy room, yeah. not just a 
a, you know, a place where they somebody threw up a microphone and an amplifier, and yeah, even right. though that's what we're doing down there, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what all it is. But it, it's 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 a great feel. Yeah, when you we get people sitting on on the top where we're standing, you know, yeah. and like on the side of us, that means that everything in the back's already filled up. Oh, that's the best, dude. Oh, a nice little, f- and it doesn't take very much to fill up this room, dude. Mm-hmm. I mean, thirty, mm-hmm. forty people maybe, and it'll no, be. No, that's packed. what I'm saying. Yeah, especially I, I don't know that that whole looking behind. Yeah, the whole being behind thing is very cool because it's side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gives you a more oh. like. I don't know, like stage, a th- like, stage feel, more like a theater in the round. It's kind of like celebrity theater. Is yeah. that what okay. it's mm-hmm. it's still called that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still called it, celebrity yeah. theater. Okay, whatever. So so it just right. gives you that really cool stage feel, and especially when we get those people back there and, and other mm-hmm. comics coming and hanging out. And I feel like it's fun because this place, the way it's set up, it almost forces you to pay attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rather than just like, oh, people sitting at the back of the place just kind of having a conversation. Everybody's kind of engaged in it, comics yeah. and people just coming from the bar otherwise. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's it's a fun, it's a great room in that yeah. aspect. That's why I like sitting up there because I, I, I feel like I'm giving the attention to the comic, like what what they need, not what they need, but what they want, mm-hmm. you know, when you they're right there because... I mean, I put that light up and it's so blinding that it's like you can't see anything mm-hmm. behind or that's right in front of the bar. Like yeah. you can only see what's on stage. So I go up there and I just trying to give energy, trying to be supportive. And that's why I want I'm trying to bring other people up there as well. Mm-hmm. But, dude, um, speaking of this open mic, that's what we're going to talk about today. That's the uh, dumb topic. Uh how many open mics have you done now, like, or hosted? Hosted? Um, oh, you mean on, like, a consistent basis? Because I've, like I've a, guest hosted a few, just, you know, filling in a night. Well, that's, that, that's just still hosting. It's still guest okay. hosting. Mm-hmm. So hosting, I'd say probably five, five, five. six. Which different. ones were they? There was... So there was, there was the, the Maya... Yeah. Um, one I, I used to do every Friday, um, the dumb, uh, not the dumb, uh, the say when say one. When. Now, um, I hosted uh, gimmicks, uh, pizza, the, the sacred pie sacred open mic. Pie. Uh, I I did host one at I can't remember what it was. It was it was an old brewery, um, and it was just literally in the back, uh, and you were like by the 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 um, by the big you know cylinders where they had all the beers and stuff they kind of just threw it in the it was it was like towards the beginning i only just hosted it once because my the my buddy who was was doing it who was, who was originally hosting it it was my buddy mike uh uh what is his last name shit i haven't talked to it so long. i feel so shitty now uh fucking um and what was the place? It was like TCBC? Or no, I, it was it was a down. It was like Fort literally Peaks. in downtown Phoenix. It was a oh, uh, downtown it was, Phoenix. It was downtown Phoenix. Yeah, it was Golden a, Margarita. No, it was right before Golden Margarita the Grand, started. Grand Pizza. No, was it Grand Pizza? No, I don't think it was because it was in a brewery. I know anyway, that for sure. How long and, ago was that? That was I don't know. That was like when I first started over like two, like almost two years oh, okay. ago. It was only around for a little bit before it ended up you know mm-hmm. going away. But so yeah, I would be, I'd be able like a little spattering, and then I've been able lucky enough to actually host show shows too, which mm-hmm. yeah. I've been doing a lot more. You know, uh, which I kind of started enjoying. Yeah, me too. The hosting aspect of it. I like so, it. Um, but yeah, so I've managed to you know so far in the short time do a handful of uh, open Hell mics yeah. and stuff. Oh yeah, did you ever host uh, the JPs? No, no, no. I just yeah. went there once, just and, and once. yeah, yeah. Um, why did you want to host open mics? Cause like, I don't know about you guys, but like when doing comedy, going to open mics, like it's cool. It's somewhere for me to go and have fun and and get what I need to get out. But like, it's different when you start saying like, oh, I'm gonna fucking host an open mic. Like, yeah. it's a responsibility, mm-hmm. man. Why did you mm-hmm. want to do this? I like hosting. I don't know what it is. I like there's something about it. I was I've always liked presenting, mm-hmm. and I've always did that. I remember when I was in like uh, middle school and stuff like that. I was part of the pro. So they used to do like morning announcements. The nerds. And, yeah. The nerds. You know, and I was on both sides. You know, I fucking lifted, dude. <laughs> no, I, okay. I, lift, I squatted. No, but I, we did like uh, you know you had to do different like extracurricular activities, and part of it was this AV club. Basically, where you just did the morning announcements, oh, nice. and you would do, and you just basically like rotate different jobs. You'd, you'd be the sound guy one day, you'd be the camera guy one day. You're hosting, uh, you know, birthdays. You're like, you're you're the intro guy today, and it just kind of gave you an idea of, of what the whole aspect of like recording and filming things like that. So, uh-huh. and then one day we did this. They had this big uh, 
event at the at, at uh, Vista Verde Middle School in North Phoenix. Shout out to Vista Verde. You mean uh, Verde? And uh, it was just that they had a bunch of games and events. The the band room was filled with like PlayStation Twos, Xboxes, and stuff where kids can go play. They had you know, the, you know, little fun games, water balloon, you know, yeah. fights and stuff like that. It was just this big thing, and I got tasked with the job of hosting. And uh, while they filmed it, they were they had a little you know camera to go around, and I was interviewing students. Oh hell yeah! And stuff like that. Nice. Asking you know just asking questions, and let's be honest, these are seventh and eighth graders. These were terrible interviewers. <laughs> okay. mm-hmm. And I w- and I I did this notorious <laughs> thing where I would cut them off, like when they were like just starting I to be born. Yeah yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like when they were just when they just say some things like yeah this is really fun. I, I want to thank Mr. Reese for doing that. And I'm like you know we're done here. And I'd walk and I'd walk <laughs> off. Like, Do you like, like coordinates? They, yeah. It's like these are, these are boring interviews. But I started doing that, and I don't know, presenting, and I, I, I used to do plays and stuff like that in elementary school. I okay. you know, do stage acting and stuff like that. So I've always liked the idea of presenting and, yeah. and doing stuff. Now, I understand how hosting can be a little bit of a chore in the sense when you have an open mic that has 40, 50 comics deep. Yeah. And, you know, they'll be like, ah, that's, these are long it's nights. But even the long nights we have, it's... It's 1.30 uh, a.m. Yeah, that's true. You're Your like, next comic is coming to the <laughs> stage. <laughs> And it's just the four left remaining yeah. comics at the stage at one thirty in the morning. It's yeah. but you know one I, of them I, sleep. <laughs> yeah, I like presenting. I like getting. I like getting the crowd hyped. I like getting making sure everything's still running smoothly, mm-hmm. right. keeping the ball rolling, rolling throughout a show, and you know really you know really hope trying to bring up comics too that really kind of gives them energy yeah. when they get on stage because nothing's worse than you come on stage to low energy yeah. and stuff uh, like that you want to come up I mean and you just want to come out guns blazing for yeah. a lot of people you ever see a set so bad you just light them early I did that to myself <laughs> <laughs> no. oh no I you know what that I, Bobby show at the the native the, I wasn't at that one dude the, did, did no, they, but he lights a lot of people at that because if you you're that's in uh, Levine I've been to the native have you uh huh Dude, so it's like urban, whatever. But <laughs> like, if you don't get them, you're fucked. And Bobby doesn't give a fuck if you're not doing it. You're not working it. He'll, yeah, you're off in three. Like that, you're done. And that may be something I need to learn as of now. But generally, I let them bomb. Yeah. Unless it's, it's some. Unless they're saying something that's like like inappropriate or just like going on a rant that's just like just yelling at the crowd, yelling and being antagonistic. <laughs> And doing all that, which has happened before. Yeah. I generally, bad sets are bad sets. You got to get through them. I don't ever get mad if somebody's bombing, especially yeah. it's an open mic. This is where you go to. Yeah. yeah. You, you get these out. The good ideas, the bad ideas, this is where it all yeah. floods yeah. out. So unless you're going on a very racially driven or politically right. driven rant that's going downhill quick and it's just, you're just saying shit, I'm like, nine times out of 10, I'm going to let you crash and burn on your own and I'll let you at the four, you know? So you're like a hosting extraordinaire, man. (laughs) I would not go that far, but what, uh, what challenges are there? For anybody out there trying to host, you know, get reading these shitty comic names, man. Okay, <laughs> these these goddamn doctor handwritings. These for these comics. You know how many times, and 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 sometimes I leave the the the, the list out, so I don't I don't see who's writing the name. So not, a lot of the time when I see it, I can like, okay, if I don't know, I can go up to him mm-hmm. and be like, okay, just just to make sure, how do I pronounce your name? But My name is Jamal, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, gotcha. but so many of these weird, and I don't have the greatest handwriting, but I think it's legible. And I don't have the greatest last name. Oh, fuck you, Doc. I saw that. <laughs> but it's just uh, the, the hard part is trying to read names. And I honestly feel terrible when I mess it up because, you know, I want I want them to have, the, uh, you know, good experience. I want them to come. And another thing that I, I bet you do. I do. <laughs> oh, shit. So nah, I, you I want them to come as many times as they can, as hard and as fast as they can do it. Fuck all over I your just, face. Yeah, you know, and I'll get behind them any way I can. <laughs> really push them as hard as I can until they really just come as hard as they can. He know, wears but, a bib. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, you guys aren't talking about comedy. Oh, you oh, sons of bitches. It. Oh, <laughs> I feel like I was set up here. No. Yeah. Dribble. <laughs> dribble. Dribble, dribble. <laughs> dribble. <laughs> no, it. But you know, I give people the. I want to give them the leeway, and, yeah. and hosting is, is. It's like I said. I just want to make every comic feel as comfortable and have as much fun yeah. and try and have the best set. Yeah. I don't like it when people bomb. They don't yeah. like it when people bomb. Nobody yeah. likes it when they bomb, except for some of the comics in the back. <laughs> you know, I've, oh, yeah. I've had a few, Haters. but but no, it's like it's part of the process, and you know, I still want them to come back and enjoy themselves, and yeah. I want everybody just to kind. Of, I know it's hard to maintain an energy for two and a half, three hours. Do, do you, go ahead. Do you uh, work on, work on your? improv skills uh, while you're hosting 
Uh, do you feed? Do you work off of other people's uh, material? Like capitalize on something they might have said? Oh yeah, 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 add, definitely. Add, because with this forehead, people bring it up. <laughs> okay, a few times. Yeah. I actually had one bring it up the other night. Yeah, you look right. very smart. Yeah, yeah, I'm very, I very. If I, I, I move my head, I change the lighting in the room. Look at this. I just like you can put me up at a lighthouse and put like a fucking flashlight and spin me around. I'll you be good, the man. Channel with yeah, it, it's, it's, <laughs> pinky in the brain. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's a big shit. <laughs> no, yeah, I definitely try and. Um, here's another thing too, I. I'm not, and I've never I'm not a good roast comic not in the sense that I can't come up with things it's like I don't like making fun of other people yeah. in that sense even when it's good and bad right. I just always like to make maybe that's my own fucking people pleasing nonsense that yeah. I need to do oh, yeah. but I love going to roast battles and seeing them dig but I just like I just feel bad even if it's a great fucking thing and they're dying <laughs> laughing I'm like oh that was a, a little personal Ouch. and I was like I don't know and so even when there are people at the cr in the crowd or other comics I don't like to antagonize people or I don't like to go into, I like to, uh, when I do crowd work, I like to go with them, not against them, yes. kind of. I don't, even if they have something goofy in this something, I try and bring it up in a lighthearted sense, right. not in a, in a fun sense. I never like to just be like, uh, look at that stupid ass fanny pack you're wearing or something right. like that, even though I know it could get yeah. a good joke and I know it would, I just like, because I know people who intentionally, especially um, people who aren't comics, who are just people to come, they don't like sitting in the front rows of shows. Yeah, they're because very, of that very, reason. and they're very. It's scared. like being in the front of a roller coaster, right? Yeah, yeah yep. it's the same sense. You're gonna get the dead bird if it comes your way. All right, <laughs> you're the first it is. But you never, you never, every like at, at you know concerts with music, everyone wants to be in the front row. You want to be yeah. as close as possible. The shows they want to be like kind of mid, like behind the light line. Mm -hmm. That's what they want to be uh -huh. where they can't be yeah. seen. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And people get very weary when they they don't want to sit up and they're just like, oh, I just don't want them to say anything about me. And I never want anybody in the front to do that, especially if I'm hosting a show. I can't control yeah. comics, and I'll never tell, tell comics to not do it because that's their prerogative. Yeah. Have you ever been in an audience though where you are called out? Yeah. And uh, it you know it kind of puts you. You kind of feel like a spotlight on yeah, you. Yeah, I you know sit in the front row for that reason. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and but, that's, pe but people freeze up yeah, in that, that moment. That's why a lot of times you go to ask somebody a question and they're like, Wednesday or yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like, they can't figure it out. And but, that's great for us. We love that. Uh -huh. We want the spotlight. That's yeah. where we get on stage. Right, right, but the right, normal yeah. everyday person who's sure. just coming and got you know some tickets to the show, they 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 just wanted you know dr have a couple drinks, laugh, have mm -hmm. a good time, and, yeah. and things. So a lot of them tense up, or even worse, they think they're part of the show now, and now you uh, have another heckling. problem on your yeah. hands yeah. Yeah. because they think you engage them. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. That they're like they they can just kind of hop on whatever you want. I'm like, no, we had our fun. Yeah. We did this. It was like you know like a, a fling. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I like uh, to think about it when I host, like as far as the energy and and, and coming mm -hmm. out and and building it up. That's why I always do that mm -hmm. Mexican grito because it just brings up the energy. But the way I like to think about it is like spreading it. It's like it's like peanut, peanut butter. butter on a bread, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, yeah. you you put it here and then you just spread it all the way around. So that's why it's like somebody's not having fun. It's like you turn to you, you need to engage. You need to talk about something. And it's like I just like spreading that energy all over. I think that actually helps mm -hmm. the whole fucking show. No, um, yeah, you're right. Which I learned a lot from this man. I owe a lot <laughs> to him because he taught me a lot about um, hosting, man beautiful I, I i like hosting too uh mm -hmm. by the way a lot of what you said uh really made sense yeah and uh you know i, I like the fact that of all the people in the show you get the most exposure mm -hmm. uh maybe the headliner is up there for 20 30 40 minutes or whatever his situation may be but hey, they see you all night yeah. you say hey, hey i'm back yeah <laughs> but i also feel like it's also kind of a little bit of a personal responsibility as that host to make sure when you get especially when you get to the point when you're opening for a headliner who's that's the show is for mm -hmm. is to make sure that crowd is you know on fire as much as they can be they're ready to laugh no lulls and then it just it rolls seamlessly and they just the, it just the levels just stay up top hell yeah so i love the support aspect of that of making just basically making sure that you know the show's not about you but you're in a lot of control of what happens in exactly. that show oh yeah so you know you know bad host can can really bring a you know make a high energy show low or keep right. a low energy show low right. bad hostess still good yeah <laughs> still good still good <laughs> Thanks for being here. Of Thanks course. for adding to the funny. Appreciate uh, it. Is there anything that you want to promote? Uh, social media, website? Uh, uh, yeah, you could follow me at Justin underscore Kirshner on all my socials, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever. Uh, I, do, I do the open mic on Tuesday nights at the, the <laughs> Hitaway. Um, 
uh, with Cole uh, East. Dysart, <laughs> on Dysart, south of Van Buren, yeah. Tuesday nights, 8.30, show starts at 9. Yeah, we do that. We do the riff session it afterwards. Like, that looked like a bunch of gang signs you were throwing up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 3.30, yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> Come yeah. down. No, we do the we do the open mic and the riff session afterwards. It's a real fun time. Uh, aside from that, I got a show at the, the Egyptian Motor Hotel in uh, in June. and I then like I got that place. Yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. a really cool. I didn't mm -hmm. notice it's a cool little hip venue. Where is that? It's downtown Phoenix, kind of okay. like Central Phoenix. It's down Phoenix. the street from El Charo. Okay. Yeah, it's not too far, but it's like an old <laughs> motel that they kind of converted into like a cool venue business. slash yeah. Yeah, business. The one that's right still behind it? It looks like it? you can hire a prostitute. I know. <laughs> you can probably the one right behind it. Yeah, then. maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, totally looks like yeah. that. Yeah, and then I got my yeah. show June 28th at the, at the 10 p.m. Prov. I just thought I have tickets on my what? website if you guys want to go get yeah. those. Yeah. Go out there. I appreciate you. Uh -huh. So nice. thank you guys so much. I've been I've been excited to do this. It was, it was such a fun time. It's so to talk with you guys. You guys are awesome, man. Thanks for being here. Here, man, it was fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. Kabari, is there anything that you want to promote? Websites? I got, a, uh, I got a few things coming up, but every fourth weekend of the month, I'm at JP's Comedy Club in Gilbert, Arizona. Come out and check us out. 860 East Warner Road. Hot shows. I'm bringing new uh, material all the time, and uh, it'll be a good time. Come out and see us. Fourth weekend of the month, JP's Comedy Club. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, for me, it's the Patreon. The YouTube, uh, I think even on uh, Spotify, we're doing the, the audio of the podcast is on there. Follow, tell your people, bro, we're almost to like 100 subscribers. I know that's nothing. That's but awesome. Look, no, it, no. It's built from like from the ground, from real stuff. I don't go out there and buy subscribers or pay anybody to do anything. It's all... Word of mouth. This guy's Mexican. He doesn't pay anybody to do mm -hmm. shit. <laughs> but, <laughs> I do it myself. Does it all himself, really mm -hmm. fast. Until mm -hmm. I die, I'll be all old and have 103 <laughs> subscribers. Uh, but thanks for watching, man. Thank Stay you. safe and have fun in life, folks. Peace and love, man. Love you all. Peace.